Hi everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make nice artisan bread and it's very easy. You could, uh, by the way, you could use either the food processor, the same method that I did with the pizza, or you could just use a bowl and a wooden stick and uh, that's about it. Um, I'm just trying to make a little less mess. Uh, so this, this would be, this would have less stuff to clean. All right, so uh, we'll start the same way. Now the difference, the difference is between this and the pizza dough is that the artisan bread doesn't have oil. So uh, we'll start same way with um, three cups of flour. And I got to tell you, measuring this is not that important. Uh, we're, um, we're trying to get a very, a very wet dough. And, uh, and a slow f fermentation of the yeast. So, uh, we'll uh, add two teaspoons and a quarter to this. We'll mix this a little. We'll add a nice, a nice size pinch of salt. Maybe a little more. that too we want uh, basically we want everything to be mixed well and we don't want any dry areas in our dough we want we want what what dough all right so uh, let's start by pouring almost all of it and start mixing And as you can see, this is not enough. We want more water. And we'll just keep doing this until there's really wet dough here. And this is nice wet dough. All right, so we're gonna let this sit in the fridge for at least 24 hours. All right, so we're gonna cover it, put it in the uh, refrigerator, and we'll come back to it tomorrow. Okay, so it's been uh, 24 hours uh, since uh, we had this in the fridge. And what I recommend at this point is to get it a little bit to room temperature. So we'll go ahead and uh, deflate this and uh, 
We'll just wait wait a little for it to get into uh, to room temperature, and we'll continue from there. All right. So now that we let the uh, dough rest a little, uh, we're gonna basically fold it a few times, and this type of folding creates these layers of of gluten sheets that really make it great. So now just tuck it down. And um, we're going to let this rise. The more you let it rise, the um, the fluffier it's going to be. So I would say about an hour, but uh, give it you know give it a, give it uh, a good time so it rises. One more thing, uh, let's at this point move it to uh, a baking sheet, just because it's going to be harder to move it later on into the oven. You can also use a, a pizza peel, but I find it perfectly fine doing it on. A, on a baking sheet and putting the baking sheet on a pizza stone. So we're gonna let it rise for about an hour. All right, so we uh, let the uh, dough rise a little and the next step is to slash it. And the reason you slash it is because so it will have space or ability to expand without ripping uh, randomly. So uh, a few ways to do it is either slash it in a cube like this, uh, which I'll show you a picture how it looked like at the end. But I think for this one, I will just slash three times like that. So, one, two, three. Now, I've prepared hot water that I'm going to dump into the broiler and uh, I'm going to transfer the, um, the loaf into a preheated oven at 450 degrees and uh, after I put it in I'm going to lower it to about 425. Uh, but there's going to be an initial drop that's why it's at 450 and I'm going to dump the water into the broiler to create steam. All right, so let's go do it. At this point, put the uh, timer for about 30 minutes. I would check from time to time just to make sure. Okay, so it's been 30 uh, minutes, and let's see if it's ready. Ooh. I think it's almost ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another. I'm gonna give it another few minutes, and then I'm gonna take it out. Uh, probably another three minutes. Okay, so it's been about 34 minutes total. In the uh, in the oven, and here it is. Look how beautiful! All right, so at this point, we're gonna let it rest before I um, before I cut into it. But uh, look how nice it looks! Perfect came out just perfect all right so I'm gonna wait 15 minutes or at least till it cools down before I cut into it okay so I let it rest a little I, I admit uh, I, I let it rest a little less than it should but at this point I'm I really want to just have you hear how nice the crust is so um, let me uh, let me cut into it now always always when you cut cut when that the uh, 
knife is towards the slope because if it's going to slip it's going to slip that way okay can you hear that look at this bread nice ah it smells great and look at this bread Nice, crunchy, delicious, and it was so easy to make. You can double, triple, even quadruple the amount of dough and just keep taking some dough from, uh, from the bucket for the week. This is just delicious. I really hope you try this at home because it's so easy. You know what you put into it. It's fresh. It makes the house smell like fresh baked bread. And this is a better bread than you would ever buy from the store or none. All right, so um, let me sum it up, okay? We need, first, we need uh, really wet dough uh, to put in the fridge for 24 hours. Afterwards, we shape it to a loaf, doing some of the stretches, and then we let it rest and rise in a nice warm spot so it uh, can expand. And then we put it in the oven. We pour some hot water into the broiler tray. So pouring the water in the broiler tray creates a lot of steam. And this is really what creates this type of crust. Look how nice it is. It's nice, flaky. See how those little bubbles here? And the crunch out of it is just incredible. Mmm, just perfect. Alright, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, please, please put it in the comment box. I know this sounds, this looks and sounds very intimidating, but it is so easy to make at home. Just give it a try, and if you fail the first time, Try again, because you have to get the feel for it. You just have to get the feel for it. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please, please thumb up, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Till next time.